Hello, how are you doing? Greetings to my colleagues in other branches and my students in other branches. Um, thank you for attending the class. I know that everybody did not show up because of the examination period. Uh, so thank you for your commitment. Um, today, inshallah, we will uh, start in book five. According to your calendar, book five uh, has five, actually book five has, has five sessions. But according to your calendar, sessions one and two are canceled, they are omitted, not included in the calendar. So we will start in sessions three, four, and five. Okay? These are the only sessions that you are responsible for in this book. This session three is about globalization. It's about globalization. The aims of this, of this session is to reflect on the meaning of globalization, differentiate between internationalization and globalization, Consider the different drivers of globalization and describe multinational operations. Uh, corporations, I'm sorry. Multinational corporations. Okay. Have you ever heard about globalization? No. You don't know what we mean by globalization. Okay. Globalization means different things to different people. Okay? okay. All right. It can be defined as the expansion of economic activities across political boundaries of nation states, which means that we mean, we mean by globalization expansion of economic activities, having different businesses um, across different countries, okay? Political boundaries we mean for in different countries. This is what we mean. It is the process of increasing economic uh, openness, growing economic interdependence, and deepening, and deepening economic integration between countries in the world. So, this is what we mean by globalization. So now when I ask you to define globalization, you will be able to? Yes, globalization. Different things to different people. Yes, and the most importantly, it's about the expansion of economic activities across political boundaries of nation states. And it is the process of increasing economic openness, growing economic interdependence, and deepening economic integration to have economic integration between uh, different countries in the world, okay? So I think, based on this definition, globalization might be a very good thing, right? For this reason, they say that globalization makes the, 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 the world a small village. Have you ever heard about this expression? It makes the world a small village, okay? All right, here we have some important definitions. When we say nation states, Nation states means discrete countries involved in international trade with other nation states. Like different countries, countries involved in international trade with other countries. Okay? Increasing economic openness means reduction of trade barriers and restrictions, usually through World Trade Organization. We need to reduce trade barriers, trade restrictions, because sometimes, like for example, you, have you ever heard about the GATT? GATT agreement, the GATT, General Agreement on Tariff and the Trade. When we impose no or minimize the custom duties on international trade. Yeah. Okay? So this was by the World Trade Organization, and of course this increased the economic uh, 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 trade between different nation states. Okay? Economic inter interdependence means trading, financial, and political agreements. Uh, taken among nation states, creating relationships of some form of mutual dependency. When we have, okay, we have agreement between two countries, okay, to have mutual, mutual dependency. You provide me, for example, with, with, um, with rice, and I provide you with cotton. You provide me with product X, and I provide you with product Y. This is mutual dependency between two different countries. Integration is the process of growing dependency of nation states on one another in terms of economies, resources, terms, and policies. So integration is a wider, a wider, uh, um, uh, have a wider, has a wider perspective than the economic interdependence. It's a kind of integration between different countries, including econ econ economies, resources, terms, and policies, okay? also known as harmonization. harmonization. Okay? All right. Profit here is the ability of a nation state 
to convert its input resources into output resources of higher value. Now we have our input resources and we, ha we conduct manufacturing processes, we process our inputs as a country, as a nation state. If we are able to convert these inputs into um, higher value output, this means that we achieve profit as a nation, as a country, okay? Now we are talking here about on, on country level, which are greater than the cost of conversion and to sell these in the international market. So again, profit is the ability of a nation state to convert its input resources into output resources of higher value, okay? Which are greater than the cost of the conversion and to sell these in international market. Now they, they will be able to sell it in the international market, market for this higher value. This way, this nation made profit. We can say this. Market refers to the arena of, of the, for the making, buying, and selling of goods and services, which now encompass a worldwide environment. So this is the market. The market uh, about all transactions, like uh, uh, making, buying, and selling of goods. Okay? Easy? Yeah. All right. Now here we have to differentiate between internationalization and globalization. And this is one of the aims of this session. Okay? When we say internationalization, internationalization includes activities such as joint ventures with partners in other countries to cooperate in some aspects of business. Like, we have some partners in other countries, for example, a company located in Egypt, a business located in Egypt, they have some partners in other countries, okay? For example, in KSA, in Lebanon, whatever, okay? So, these cooperate, these businesses, these three businesses, cooperate in some aspects of the business. They cooperate in some aspects of, of the business. For example, in marketing, in manufacturing, in whatever, some aspects, but not everything, okay? All right. On the other hand, this is internationalization. On the other hand, globalization is an extension of internationalization. It's wider, extension, okay? In the sense that most aspects of the production or service are performed and integrated across many global locations. Again? Like, uh, salad, like, salad. like McDonald's. No, it's different. How come? All in different, in different locations we have everything is done. The country. On country level, right? Yes. McDonald's is in the States. McDonald's yeah. is in Italy. McDonald's is in Egypt. And actually we do not, for example, here in Egypt, we do not rely on them to send us food. So, uh, they do everything here. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is, Let's read it again game. with me. Read it again with me. Okay. It is the, uh, an extension of internationalization okay. in the sense that most aspects, most aspects, of the production or service are performed and integrated across many global locations. So everything is done everywhere. But this one, no, just some different, some aspects. Like any, like any company that has a, a partner, a, an agent in one of the countries. Any company that has an agent in one of the countries. Okay, this agent might be a partner for the company. Okay, taking, taking uh, just performing the marketing and selling activity. But manufacturing is located only in Egypt. Okay, so assume that the company, the main company is in Egypt and we have another partner uh, who is responsible in India, who is responsible only for marketing and selling. So they cooperate in this area only, in marketing and selling, conducting marketing research because the Egyptian company will not be able to do, well, is not familiar with the Indian market. Exactly. So they have a partner there to do this on, on its behalf. You got that? This is an example, mm -hmm. okay? General example. All right, now you know the difference between yeah. internationalization and globalization? Okay. Here we have dr different drivers, drivers for globalization. Okay, when we, we came up with this globalization, of course, some factors pushed different businesses to do it, pushed different countries to adopt it, okay? So what do you mean by drivers of globalization? Yes, these are the pressures or changes that have impelled both businesses and nations to adopt this approach. What drives them to adopt this approach? 
What pushed them to, to adopt this approach? Okay? All right. We have four types of drivers. And this was a question in the exam in, in uh, last semester, in the final. Discuss or uh, describe the uh, drivers for globalization. We have four types. We have cost drivers, market drivers, government drivers, and competition drivers. Okay? Let's start by the cost drivers. When we talk about cost drivers, these seek out an advantage to a business from the lowering of costs of the service or production and would include the following. The main idea behind globalization when we talk about cost driver is to lower the cost of the service or, or, pro, or, or, or production. Lower the costs. So some businesses and some nations adopted the idea of globalization because of cost, due to cost drivers. Okay. So they include gaining economies of scale. Gaining economies, you remember economies of scale when we explained this, when you produce in mass and you achieve the, uh, uh, the lower fixed cost per unit, okay? So they gain economies of scale because they sell already on a wider scale, right? Uh, across uh, uh, political boundaries of different nations. The development and growth of technological innovation. Development of, and the growth of technological innovation. This is another thing. Lower labor and, and other resources costs. Like, for example, in China, labor, labor is, different, is different. Like, they, they are less expensive, mm. right? For this reason, many of the, of the, yes, yeah. uh, yes, of the, of the uh, multinational uh, corporations uh, sent their manufacturing uh, uh, activities to, to India, to China, to, okay? To, uh, why? Because labor there is less expensive. Less expensive. So they look for this because of what? Because of the, the cost. They would like to lower the cost. Fast and efficient transportation systems. Yes, they encourage them to do it. Why not? Okay? All right. These are the cost drivers. Here, easy? Okay. Then we have the market drivers. The development in a world market brings changes in the demands and tastes of, of consumers. Now we have a, a lot of change in consumers' preferences, right? And a lot of yeah, needs and demands. You are right. Okay, so these are by what? Establishment of global brands which have an instant recognition and are created and supported by global marketing and advertising. Now we have international brands or global brands, what we call global brands. And these are actually supported by worldwide advertising. Okay. So some, some drivers, what, which we call market drivers, uh, uh, drive uh, the businesses and nations to adopt this, the globalization. Why not? We have some global brands that will that are supported by global or worldwide advertising. Okay, this is something. Increasing low cost of travel. Now, the travel is, it has a low cost, okay, uh, which begins to create the idea of global consumers with a growing convergence of lifestyles and tastes. So now, it's easy for everybody to travel. It's, yeah. it's easy because traveling, Yes, is, is getting less expensive. Mm -hmm. And accordingly, everybody is, 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 is traveling and they have, they experience different cultures and tastes which affect their preferences. Exactly. They can accept, here, even here in Egypt, we, now we have Iraqi food, we have Chinese food, we have mm -hmm. uh, Indian food, we have a lot different. And we accept them all and we enjoy them all, right? Mm -hmm. which, which means that we, we, the people, the consumers became global. Exactly. Okay, in their tastes and preferences, right? Okay, growing per capita income and hence increasing the purchasing power of consumers. Now, worldwide, I'm not talking about developing countries, but okay. in general, uh, um, the per capita income is increasing. Okay, so this drives people, drive the consumers to, to, to purchase more. And as long as they purchase more, they are interested in more uh, or new products which drive them to accept different, again, different preferences, different uh, uh, um, criteria of different products, and so on. These are the marketing drivers. So cost drivers, marketing drivers, uh, government drivers. Okay, this is the, the, the third type. Nations work together to increase the possibility of trading activities 
in their international trade to create economic activity and wealth. So this is uh, on nation level. They work together, why? To increase the possibility of trading activities. We would like to increase our possibility of trading activities because this um, affected the wealth of the whole country, okay? And this is done by what? A reduction in trade barriers, okay? Through the removal of tariffs to imports and exports. Now, as I told you, tariffs or custom duties are being minimized based on the GATT agreement. So they remove this or minimize this so that they can have the free trade, as we, we call it. Um, uh, uh, um, so that this will encourage different countries to, to have the international trade. The creation of trading blocks, trading blocks, blocks like, like the Europe, Euro, European Union, this is a trading block. Okay, so countries together, they, they, um, uh, they cooperate and form a block, okay? Uh, and even the European Union, they, they got their own currency, which is the euro, right? So this is how they do it in order to benefit and to generate more wealth for their countries, okay? The creation of more open and the free, freer uh, economies, they do that. Private privatization of previously centrally controlled industries or organizations, privatization to, to switch some organizations from being public or belonging to the public sector to the private sector. This way they will be better managed. In some countries, privatization was very successful. So they were able to uh, manage such uh, companies better and to generate more uh, wealth for the whole country, okay? This is about government drivers. The last type of drivers, which is the competition drivers. Competition drivers. Here, the opening up of economies or businesses creates an environment in which more players can enter the marketplace. Of course, now we have many markets and we have different players from different countries. Yeah. Okay? Whether nationally or internationally. This means that competition will increase as the business, uh, businesses strive to attract potential consumers for their products or services. A lot of competition, tough competition. Everybody's trying to, to, to get a more or higher market share, okay? So this is brought by, about by, this was brought by what? The cross-border ownership of home firms uh, uh, by foreign organizations. Now, some organizations, uh, uh, um, Egyptian companies, are owned by foreigners, yeah. okay? So this is one of the, uh, um, of the ways. Another thing, movement of companies to become globally centered rather than nationally centered through acquisition, strategic alliances, and takeover. Have you ever heard about that? Some, a bank take over another bank, or, okay? Merger between different, okay. um, different uh, entities or institutions, mm -hmm. and so on. This way, they are they, they take different markets because can you imagine now I'm, I'm one of the organizations, I have a target segment, I have my own clients, okay, I serve in different markets and another company will acquire me or will merge with me or will take me over, okay, based on these are different forms of acquisitions and accordingly what will happen is that this new institution or this, this one will benefit out of these markets and clients, right? So they, they, they have a wider uh, uh, segment. They have a wider, uh, a wider level of, of markets and marketing activities. You got that? Yeah. Okay. The growth of these global networks of organizational structures and businesses. We have, again, global networks. Here are the, 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 the global networks of organizational structures and businesses. A lot of communications between different organizations. You have, when we talk about networks, we have suppliers in, in one country, supplier in one country, a manufacturer in another country, a client in a third country. So it's a network. When we talk about networks, so it's like a lot of relationships between different businesses all over the world. Okay? We do not do that locally and that's it. We get our raw materials from one country, some, uh, some parts from another country, supply, another supplier. We manufacture here and we, send to different, we sell to different countries, right? This is, so this is growing approach. Mm -hmm. This is the competition 
about the competition drivers. Okay? So how many drivers for globalization do we have? Competition. Competition? Uh, government? Government. Uh -huh. Marketing? Marketing. Market? Okay, yeah. let's go first through one. it. First Market one. drivers? Cost, drivers. Cost drivers. Yeah. Okay. Cost, Cost market, market uh, huh? government, government competition. and the competition. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And here we have advantages and disadvantages of globalization. Advantages and disadvantages. Okay. Advantages and disadvantages is uh, a frequent question in the exam again. Like usually they ask, they ask about uh, 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 define globalization, explain the drivers of globalization. Or uh, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of globalization? These are the main points that usually uh, are in the exam when we, uh, uh, when we talk about this session, session three of book five. Globalization generates wealth, goods and services which are available to a greater percentage of the world. This is one of the advantages. It generates wealth. Why? Because goods and services are available for, yes, okay, available to greater percentage of the world. It gives rise to economies of scale. This is another advantage, okay? Businesses are better able to seek out low-cost uh, uh, producers and move the manufacture of goods uh, and the provision of services in more competitive prices. Now we are able to, to do what? We are able to choose. Because of globalization, we are able to choose. We are able to, to seek low-cost producers. And instead of just having this one locally, we can get somebody else, right? Okay, this is another thing. Uh, it facilitates growth in communications, uh, the internet, email, satellite, and television. Facilitates growth in communication, okay? Because people working on these things, they know that businesses are interested in this. This will help them to, to do their transactions, okay? So uh, this increased the development in these areas, in these aspects, like internet, satellite, and email and all these things. These are the advantages, okay? What about the disadvantages? Okay, the vast majority of the world's population may not be able to purchase these uh, consumer goods even at the lower prices. Sometimes they are not interested in this. Not all goods will be uh, appealing to, to different consumers, right? Okay, this is something. The new technologies and access to communications may not benefit all in that they create social and economic desires which can't be met within all societies. Like sometimes, sometimes the, the uh, technologies and access to communications, okay, may initiate a desire, but this desire cannot be met in some societies. Why? Because it might not uh, go in line with the culture with the religion, or with whatever. Okay? So when you, you see one of the global advertising, okay, you, you, might, you might be happy with, you, you, have, you are interested in this product, but you might not be able to get it because of what I'm, I'm telling you, some other barriers or constraints related to culture, related to whatever. Okay? The nature of the environment itself. Mm -hmm. The products of the global economy may destroy the manufacturing diversity and cultural heritage of a country. Now, okay, as a, each country has its own identity, right? Okay, and because of this growth in global uh, 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 transactions, yeah, everybody's changing, which means that this destroys the country's heritage, which is one of the disadvantages, of course. Okay, globalization may undermine the idea of a nation states as a global business becomes more powerful financially and politically than its host country. You know that the idea of the nation state, we said that we have a mutual agreement and interdependence between different nations, okay? Here, because of globalization, because of globalization, sometimes the multinational company is uh, more powerful financially than the host country itself, okay? which means that this destroys the idea of uh, 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 the, the, yeah, the nation state, okay? These are the disadvantages of globalization. And here we have 
the multinational corporations, because one of the aims of this session is to describe multinational corporations, right? A multinational corporation is a business that has invested in several countries. This is multinational because, because of this, it's a multinational, okay? So it has invested in different countries, has employees in these countries, they have employees in these countries, okay? It, uh, its products and services are marketed on a worldwide basis. Its products and services are marketed on a worldwide basis. This is multinational. For example, the HSBC. Okay? It is worldwide, it's the world local bank. The world's local bank. We call it like, yeah. So, uh, the, the, it is, it invested in different countries. It has employees in each country, right? And the, their, their services are marketed all over the world. Okay. Multinational corporations are large businesses that have budgets which involve sums of money that are often larger than the gross domestic product of nations with which they are involved. Actually, imagine this. HSBC, for, exa for example, as an example. How many buildings do you have in Egypt? How many buildings do they have and lands do they have in other countries, in Asia? In Europe, how many buildings do, do they have? Lands, buildings, and so on. So the, the, the assets they own, the multinationals own, um, sometimes are greater than the gross domestic product of one of the countries. They are huge. Multinationals are huge, okay? And this is one of the problems, why? Because yeah, they hold, they hold significant economic power, significant economic power because they control a large uh, proportion of the world's economic assets, okay, and resources such as raw materials, production facilities, and financial resources. So now they have power. These multinationals have power, okay. Economic power tends to give businesses a significant amount of political power. Accordingly, when we talk about economy, we, we, or economic aspects, do not forget the political aspects because, because now I, uh, um, I, own, I own a huge proportion of the assets of the world, okay? Absolutely. Accordingly, I have the political power over yes. some countries. Mm -hmm. All right. Most governments want to promote stable and uh, prosperous economic conditions and are thus happy to support MNCs, the multinational corporations. Why? Because when I have a multinational corporation in my country, this means that I have economic flourishment, I, I have less unemployment level because they hire employees from my citizens, and so on. Okay? So this, but actually, I still they have this negative aspect, which is the political, economic and political power. It depends on the multinational, how they use it. Okay? This is a very important question. Okay? All right. Any questions? You are fine. So we define globalization. We differentiate it between globalization and internationalization, right? We uh, uh, explain the four types of, uh, of globalization drivers, right? Government, cost. Excellent. And last one was government cost. Competition. And market. Mine? Market drivers. Market drivers. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the advantages and disadvantages of globalization. And finally, the, we describe what we mean by multinational corporations and the effect of them on different nations. Okay? All right. What happened? Here we have... Session for business and power. We concluded in the last in the session three with the power of multinational companies. Here, this session is about business and power. Here, the, 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 the aims are to outline and explain the three dimensions of power, okay? Explain how power works at multiple levels. Explain how power is, uh, is associated not only with uh, overt conflict, but also with the culture and structure of organizations and societies. And finally, to explore these ideas in the analysis of an article. 
The article is a new book. We are not, we are not go, going through the article itself in class, but actually this information, the information you will get, you have to go and read the whole session and then try to apply these ideas on the article in the book. Okay, okay? so that you can achieve the last aim. Okay, power and influence. Well, here we have examples involving uh, an exercise of power, control, and influence by one individual, group, business, or institution over another. Like we have different, we, the power can be practiced by individual, group, business, or an institution over another. Okay? So here we have the first uh, example is globalization. Okay. We know now what we mean by globalization. Okay, how can this, how can this uh, practice power over, over others? You see the, the, the disadvantage, they have the power in the uh, country. Yeah. The economic uh, power. You are right. Okay. They can control, okay. they can control the country. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, because, yeah. So businesses across the globe are becoming more alike depending on whether one particular business model affects managers within other businesses or not. Sometimes because even of globalization, um, managerial styles are copied, are influencing, influencing. like some managers in, in one of the multinational companies affect managers in other businesses, you know, how they manage and, and all these things. This is this, this influence. Through globalization. I'm sorry. Good one or bad? It depends. It depends. If if this if the the management is wise enough, if the managerial practices are ethical and all these things, it's a good thing because this means that others will benefit out of this experience. If not, this means if it is unethical or something like that, this means that others will uh, uh, yes will will copy what the what they do and will hurt the society accordingly. So it depends on the experience itself. The, the technology, powerful global threats, will cause managers to design and implement new systems, okay? Such as security and access control systems to protect their businesses. This is another example because of the, uh, of the globalization, because of the network, because of, of, of all these things, managers need to feel that they are secure. The businesses are secure. Yeah. So what they do, that, they do that is to have security and access control systems to protect their businesses. This is another thing. Yeah. Okay? All right. The networks, having access to the internet rely, relies on our time resources, skills, and social, uh, and social space uh, uh, to serve the web. Okay? Again, this involves an exercise of some sort of power. So, okay, three examples of, of, of power. Globalization and how globalization affects different businesses. Technology and how technology and development of technology affect different businesses again. Managers, how they, they adopt the security and access, uh, and access control systems and all these things. And finally, the networks. Okay? All right. Dimensions of power. We have three main dimensions of power. When we talk about power, we have three main dimensions. Okay. What do we mean by power? What do we mean by power? This is a very important question in this case. Power has been recognized as the ability to make someone do what they otherwise would, wouldn't do. Okay. To make you do something Otherwise, you will not do. Okay? This way I have power. <laughs> this way I have power over you. Okay, attend the class. If, if you were not, you were not planning to attend the class, but you attended because I asked you to do that, then I have power over you. Okay? <laughs> okay, this is what we mean by power. All right. Power has three main dimensions. Uh, the first uh, phase of power, we call it interpersonal dimension. The first phase is interpersonal dimension. The second phase of power is called organizational, structural, cultural dimension. Okay? The third phase of power, societal, structural, cultural dimension. 
<laughs> okay. All right. That's very good. Let's take them one by one. Quickly. Interpersonal dimension. This is the simplest phase of power. The simplest one. Okay. Uh, A has power over B. Like Dr. Amal has power over Dawood, for example. Okay. Uh, to the extent that A can get B do something they wouldn't do otherwise. This is the first phase of power, okay? In the first phase of power, there is some observable disagreement or conflict at an interpersonal level. It is based on actions or events that take place. Like usually, when we have two persons, this is the personal level, okay? Two persons, we, ha we have a relationship, okay? And we have more influential party, okay? Somebody can practice power over the other person. Okay, this is the level, the first, first phase of, the, of power, when we talk about the, inter, the personal level. Okay? All right. To get you do something, otherwise you wouldn't do. Okay. Then we have the organizational, structural, and cultural dimension. This is the second phase, okay, which builds on the first phase. But when we say here interpersonal, like between two persons, but here organizational, structural, and cultural dimension, this is something in business, okay. in the organization. It refers to the pattern of relationships within an organization, between a manager and an employee, and, and employees, for example. How managers practice power, or power over employees, okay, within the context of the organization, okay? So, such as business where, where, uh, whereby rules, hierarchy, and the cultural norms make it normal and reasonable for some people to get others do what they otherwise wouldn't do. Like according to the regulations and bylaws of the organization, the manager can force employees to do something. This is another level of, of, of power, another dimension of power. We, this is the second phase. Okay? Clear? Okay. The last one, this is societal, structural, cultural dimension. Societal, we are talking about the whole society here. The whole society. How some organizations hmm, practice power over the government, over the society, over uh, people, okay? Let's see. This is the most radical and probably the most difficult to grasp. All right. It concerns the pattern of relationships and understanding generally uh, pre uh, prevailing in a society at large and how power is distributed throughout that society. Certain groups have the material capacity to exert pressure on others. Some groups in the society have the capacity to do that. Okay? For example, as I told you, some, like the, when the, a, multinational, a multinational company uh, practices practice power over the government not to enact a specific law, not to uh, impose or introduce taxes on its products, okay? Uh, uh, when, one, when some groups, for example, have you ever heard about pressure groups? Pressure, pressure groups. No. We studied that in, 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 in steep model when we studied the environmental factors, okay. okay? Pressure groups when we have some groups that will push some organizations to do... The also. Yes, in the marketing also as well. Yeah. So here, this is the third level of power, which is societal, structural, cultural dimension, okay? These are the three main dimensions of power, okay? Easy? Yeah. All right. Done with this. Any questions about that? Okay. Our last session in this book. Okay, <laughs> okay we are done. <laughs> Almost done. Session five is about resisting and the challenging business power. Now, we said that, okay, we know that, for example, different businesses can practice power over different nations. Mm -hmm. And we studied what we mean by power, and we studied the three phases of power, or three dimensions of power. Now, assume that one of the businesses is practicing the negative side of power over the society how to control 
this business. Let's see. The aims outline how corporate power affects the lives of ordinary people as citizens and employees. How the corporate power, how the uh, organizational power of a corporation or multinational uh, uh, um, affects the lives of people and citizens uh, 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 and employees. I would line the different ways in which corporate power can be resisted and challenged. How to resist this, how to challenge the business power if it is negative, okay? Apply these ideas to a case study. And again, the case study is in this session. So when you study this session, you have to read the whole session and then try to apply the ideas on the case. The case is in the session itself, okay? All right. Negative business power. It's the dark side to business. Of course, when, we, when the business tries to dominate or tries to, to drive government or, or, the, or nation or people to do something that they don't want to do, okay, this means that they started to practice the dark side of power, okay? All right, where it sometimes acts in ways that are not necessarily in the interest of the world, uh, of the wider social way. So if this is, is, this is not in the interest of the society, not in the interest of, the, or, of, uh, of people, citizens, or employees, this means that this is a dark side of, of power. Okay? All right. In other words, business power needs to be controlled in one way or another. We need to control it. Okay? To ensure that citizens and society will not get affected negatively. So once you feel that the society and people will be affected negatively by this business power, this means we have to control it. This is what we will say now. How to control the negative business power? A very important question. We have four ways or four, four tools to control the negative business power. Again, this was a question in the exam last semester. Okay, it's, a, it's a, like a frequent question. Very important. We have the first tool is to have the voluntary action on the part of the business. The business itself will take an action, okay, and will be ethical with the society and people. Because they have what we call the business ethics, the code of ethics. Some businesses will do that. So this is the first way or tool to control the negative business power, to have code of ethics. So the business will take the action on its part to avoid practicing the negative or the dark side of power, okay? Or to affect the uh, society negatively. Here, ethics refer to businesses conducting their activities in accordance with generally accepted ethical norms. So, they, feel, they, they know their corporate social responsibility. So, they try to benefit the society and not to hurt it, not to pollute the environment, not to produce unhealthy products, and so on, okay? So they do that because they, 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 cope, they comply with or uh, they comply with the ethical or the code of ethics or the ethical norms, okay? This is one way, one tool. Do you think that all businesses will do that? No. Of course not. How many businesses will do it? A no, Not a lot, right? Okay. Then we have the government regulation. This is another tool. So this is from another party. The government will do it, will control, okay? So this is considered to be the main form of external control of businesses. This is internal, of course, because it is from inside the, the, the business, but this one is external. Okay, businesses are subject to laws relating to legal issues, financial issues, employee regulations, and so on. If they do not adhere to law, they will, they will be penalized, mm -hmm. of course. Okay, so this is, um, so abuses of power by large companies can happen easily in countries with weak governments. If the government is weak, uh, uh, multinationals or giant corporations might abuse their power. Okay? Might abuse. They're not weak. They're, they're also with their business. That's the problem. They also support the business? Yeah. yeah sometimes, yes. Sometimes, sometimes if there is corruption, mm -hmm. like if the society has corruption, of course they support the businesses to get benefit out of it. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Then we have the consumer action. Now, this is the third tool. The business, the government, and the consumer. The consumer should protect themselves, okay? 
So increasing numbers of consumers want not only to buy products, they don't only want to buy products uh, of high quality, but also buy from businesses that act in socially responsible ways. Most of people now look for green uh, uh, businesses, green investments and so on. They encourage this, okay? Because they don't want, they will not buy from, uh, um, like the, it's not only about the quality of the product, but also it's about the, the, act, the act or the behavior, the behavior of the business. That this business hurt our society, that this business uh, uh, negatively influences the society or the government or what's going on. So they will stop buying from this. This is a growing trend in con uh, by consumers. So they try to avoid buying from such businesses. This way, businesses will, will, uh, yes, will stop doing what they are doing and they will be more socially responsible to not to lose their customers. Okay? Uh, um, Consumers can buy cut uh, products they consider to be unethical, like for example, animal fur, mm. for example. Direct action of pressure groups, and here we have the pressure groups. They are very effective in some countries, actually. So pressure groups can monitor and influence business power. They appeal to citizens and consumers, making questionable business activities known and hope citizens would demand government action. Usually, the uh, pressure groups, this is what they do. When they know that the business is, is not doing, is not, uh, they conduct some unethical behavior, mm -hmm. they let everybody know. They stop they, yeah, they announce this to everybody. Stop buying from this business. They do one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Until they get the support from all citizens and get people asking the government to stop this business or to um, take action against this business. You got that? So these are the four tools we have to control the negative business power. How many tools? Four, okay? They are the voluntary action on the part of the business, the government regulation, huh, consumer action, and direct action of pressure groups. Are they easy? Clear? Okay. Very light also. Yes, okay. Do you have any questions about this? No. Nothing? Sure? Need to? You're done. But before mm. leaving, okay. I just would like to remind you with this no, bridge. No, I'm down. Swimming. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't say I'm that. <laughs> <laughs> you should be here on the other <laughs> side. <I'm finished>. <laughs> <laughs> we are done with our course. Okay. We are done with our session. No. Um, so I don't know. Do you feel that the course was, was useful? Yeah, it was very, it was useful, yeah. very useful for you. Yeah. Okay. Do you think that do you think that we achieved the aims of the of the curriculum? For me, yeah. I oh. Achieved, achieved, yeah, a lot. Okay. Yeah. So you feel that you, you will be now you are more familiar with different concepts and aspects, and you feel that you, become you will, known. Huh? become known, like uh, better yeah. than before. Yeah. Better than before. Yeah. Do you think that you have sufficient knowledge? that will support you in the more advanced courses? Of course, yeah. Because okay. it's the beginning. And this is the beginning. I learned a lot of marketing, a lot of uh, management, everything. Okay, hmm? so, so at the end, hmm? after the exam, after the final exam, inshallah, I'd like to meet you on the other side. Oh, that's okay. You and, you, so, uh, and your, all my students and your colleagues. Sure. Inshallah. So, um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for, for everybody. Thank you for my colleagues. Uh, uh, in other branches, thank you for uh, thanks for uh, my students in other branches. I hope that the course was interesting, useful, and I wish you the best of luck in your final exam. Uh, I wish I wish you a successful academic life in AOU, and I hope that when you graduate, you will uh, feel that you benefit a lot from AOU courses. Um, I will miss you very much. Um, best of luck. Thank you.